ان شاء الله وي هاف تفسير سوره جزء عامه تفسير ابن كثير وي ريتش تو سوره العصر ان شاء الله وود لايك تو فينيش ذا ذس از بيست اون تفسير اوف سيدنا ابن كثير ايفن ذا مختصر ات از ا سامري جست اوف ليرنينج ذا مينينجز اوف وات وي ار ريسايتينج سينس موست اوف اس ريسايتد سو ان شاء الله نوينا اربعين نوينا اعتكاف نوينا الخلوة نوينا العزل رياض السلوك السيام الله تعالى العظيم في هذا المسجد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الله is swearing by the age by the age either the time of a human being اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد The first view and the popular opinion is that Allah is swearing by that uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad is the age of man is the popular view in terms of uh, Al-Asr, the meaning of Al-Asr Wal-Asri inna al-insana la fiqus that Allah is swearing by uh, By Asr, the human being are at loss. I mean, the life that Allah gives us, if we are not, if we're heedless, it will cause us to be losing. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Verily, man is in loss. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except those who believe. Except the believers and that are engaged in good deeds and وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ And that they help each other by supporting each other to do good and reminding each other of good deeds and of being patient. It is said, I read somewhere that, that it was kind of a... That the Sahaba did that whenever they met, they would recite, uh, companions would recite this surah to remind them to encourage each other to do good. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Surah Al Asr, Sayyidina Imam Shafi'i, he said that this surah, if a person really understands, uh, reflects upon it, it's enough for a believer uh, to, it's enough يعني, uh, to teach you. How to live, um, to take heed of your time in this in this world, to stay away from evil and to engage in good deeds, using your your time and what Allah favored you with. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. And then Surah Al Humaza. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa li kulli huma. Go to every humaza lumaza. Humaza is somebody who puts people down, who exposes people, who uh, tries to make people small in the eyes of others, so that he becomes big. Lumaza is the same thing, but it is done uh, not in front of the person. So you go around and tell people that person is not good, so forth. Stay away from that person. And usually these people, they, they use this, they use fitna and they use uh, ways to put people down, to discourage people. And they usually, these people, right after that comes the one who collects wealth and counts it. Uh, thinking that يحسب أن ماله أخلده, thinking that his money is going to make him live eternally, huh? and usually these two things are tied, like that the character of the person who is humaza and lumaza, who who puts people down, uh, destroys people's reputation and so forth, is that they love money, they love to collect money. Allah says, verily, no, nay, verily, they, la yumbadhanna fil hutama, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will throw them in hellfire. And wa ma adraka mal hutama, what do you know about al hutama? It's burning fire. Allati tattali'u ala al-afi'ida. 
which leaps up over the heart. The fire of Allah which leaps up over the hearth. So the correct way of uh, the Hamaz is a, a slander, someone who slander people in his speech. Uh, going around, Ibn Abbas sa said, one who disgraces others. Sayyidina said that it will burn them all the way to their hearts while they are still alive. Inna it is sealed, it is covering them. Fi uh, stretched in pillars. Sayyidina Ibn Abbas said he will make them enter pillars stretched forth, meaning there will be columns over them of fire, and they will have chains on their necks and the gates hell will be shot upon Allahumma afina as surat al-humaza tafsir surat al-feel chapter 105 the elephant rahma rahim did you not see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did to ashab al-feel alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-feel alam yaj'al kaydahum fi tadlil wa arsala alayhim tayran ababil termin bi hijaratim min sijjil faj'alahum ka'asfim ma'kul the brief story or summarized story of the people of the field of uh, uh, of the elephant the it is it's connected to the the story of the people of the ditch that the same king his name is himyar was a polytheist was the one who was killing of the people of the ditch in uh, Surah Al-Buruj and he was the one people of the ditch were Christians and their number was approximately 20,000 that were thrown in the fire of the ditch uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allah. The story is Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. That Abraha I'm trying to summarize it. That Abraha marched to Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad to destroy Kaaba and he had a big elephant Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad when he approached the area of the Taif its people the people of Thaqif went out to Abraha they wanted to appease him because they were fearful of their place of worship and which was called Allat Abraha was kind to them and sent a, a man named Rijal with him as a guide. When they reached a place known al mughammas which is near Mecca, they settled there. Then he sent his troops to capture the camels and other grazing animals of Mecca. And this is the story where 
Sayyidina Abu Talib, the grandfather of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his, his camels and, and the animals, the grazing animals of the Meccan people were captured. Inclu including 200 camels belonging to Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib, not Abu Talib. Abu Talib is his uncle. The leader of the particular expedition was a man named Al Aswad bin Mafsud. So Sayyidina Abu Talib came out and told, and this is the famous. The Sia that uh, Sayyid Abdul Muttalib went to Abraha and said to him that I'm here not to just ask him for my camels. And Abraha said to him, I thought you were a wise man, but now I see that you don't care about, uh, you're, not, you're not that wise and you don't care about your people. Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib, Abdul, Abdul Muttalib said, he says, don't you care basically about the house, the Kaaba? He said, the camels are mine, and the Kaaba has its Lord, in, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect it. He said, I was blessed by you when I first saw you, but now I withdraw from you after you have spoken to me. You are asking about 200 camels, which I, I have taken from you, but you leave the matter of, of the Allahumma salli. Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib said to him, Verily, I am the Lord of the camels. As for the house, it has its own Lord. So the story is that he marched upon the Kaaba, and this is Amil Fil, that he marched upon the Kaaba, and the big elephant refu would refuse to move. And that's why the story, story the, the surah is mentioned the people who own the elephant uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent upon them that punishment um, that uh, birds carrying stones burn, burning stones in, in their beaks and their uh, uh, legs and destroy the army of Abraha أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ فَعَلَ رَبُّكَ بِأَصْحَابِ الْفِيلِ وَأَرْسَلَ عَلَيْهِمْ طَيْرًا أَبَابِيلَ تَرْمِيهِمْ بِحِجَارَةٍ مِنْ سِجِّيلٍ فَجَعَلَهُمْ كَعَصْفٍ مَأْكُولٍ He made them completely عصف Ibn Abbas said that أَبَابِيل means some of them following after birds that are coming in in waves طَيْرًا أَبَابِيلَ And he made them kaasfim makul. Sa'id bin Jubair said that them, he, this means straw, which the common people call habur. He also said that the same thing. Ibn Abbas said the last is the shell of a grain. So he made them into like empty shells, just like the covering of wheat. When you remove the cover of the wheat, how that does that look? This is how the army of Abraha became and this surah is related to the next surah the tafsir of surah Quraysh Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim li-ilafi Quraysh ilafi mihlat al-shita'i wa-sayf fal-yabudu rab hadha al-bayt al-lazhi at'amahum min ju'in wa amanahum al-khawf the surah of Quraysh is uh, for the uh, two year trips that they used to make Quraysh uh, would make every year one in the winter time to Yemen and one in the summer time to Syria to Sham. Those were two merchant trips that they were make that made them very wealthy. Let them worship the Lord that has fed them. Um, they, uh, يعني, fed them that they and made them safe. From any fear. This is related to Surah Al Fil because what, what happened with uh, that King Abraha and how his army was destroyed by Allah made the people of Mecca and Mecca a place of reverence that even though around them 
people would raid each other and kill each other. But when it comes to Mecca and its caravans, they they will uh, they were uh, Allahumma salli alayhi wa Muhammad. They uh, would not approach Meccans because of Kaaba, and that's why Allah is saying, "Faliyabudu Rabbi Hadha al-Bayt." Let them worship the Lord of this house, which have has taken care of their sustenance and of their safety. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad hatta yarda. And we are, because we're, we're just summarizing here, um, because you can, with Ayat al-Quran, my Shaykh used to say that every letter has 124,000 meaning in, in dunya and, and more, and secrets. So we are just basically summarizing, summarizing the meaning of the Ayat, uh, because first of all, Zaid is here <laughs> in maybe less than an hour. And um, we're not also experts on Quran, so nor to me. So we're, we're we're relying fully on Tafsir Ibn Kathir. So someone uh, doesn't say, oh, you know, he thinks himself a musaf- mufassir. We are not making Tafsir. We are reading Tafsir and elaborating on it. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Chapter. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أرأيت الذي يكذب الدين فذلك الذي يدعو اليتيم ولا يحض على طعام المسكين فأين المصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم شاهون والذين هم يراؤون ومنعون الماعون This surah was revealed because of Abu, Abu Jahl is the main culprit in it hmm? أرأيت الذي يكذب الدين Do you see the one who denies religion the, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم فذلك الذي يدعو اليتيم this is the one who treats the treats the orphan harshly. Wala yahuddu ala ta'am miskin and does not encourage to feed the the people who are impoverished. Fawailun lil musallin alladhina hum an salatihim shahun alladhina hum yura'un wa yamna'un al ma'un. Woe to the those who pray that are heedless from their prayer that are showing off wa yamna'un al ma'un. And it is said there was a story that a, a person came, an orphan came, a naked orphan came to Sayyidina, to uh, came to uh, uh, Abu Jahl, and asked him for something, and he treated him very badly, and he went to Prophet Sallallahu and Prophet Sallallahu took the orphan back to Abu Jahl, and asked him to treat him nicely, and Abu Jahl treated him very kindly. And the, the people said, how, how, what happened? He said, I saw two spears above Prophet that were ready to hit me if I said anything or did anything to harm me. Woe unto those who perform salah, those who their salah. Huh? Ibn Abbas said, this means the hypocrites who pray in public but do, nay, do not pray in private. They are absent minded Here on Salatim Sahun, there are many opinions. Some say those who are heedless in their prayer. Some of the opinions say heedless in portions of their prayer, or that they are heedless where they don't perform the prayer correctly. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Alladheena hum yura'un, those who show off in front of people when they do good deeds.
And there's a hadith of Prophet ﷺ, من سمع الناس بعملي سمع الله به سامع خلقه وحقره وشخره. That whoever shows off and likes people to know what he's doing of good deeds, Allah will let everybody know about him who can hear, will hear about him, and Allah will humiliate him and belittle him for in front of people. وَيَمْنَعُونَ الْمَعُونَ And those who with, withhold, withhold Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad They do not uh, like people to benefit Anything that benefits people They like to prevent people from it وَيَمْنَعُونَ الْمَعُونَ يعني The stingy ones Sayyidina Ibn Mas'ud was asked about the meaning of ma'und. It says what the people give to each other. Yani what people lend to each other, like to for their help, like an axe, a pot, a bucket, something like that. Wallahu a'lam. Chapter 107. That's chapter. Chapter 108, Surah Al-Kawthar, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna a'tainaka al-Kawthar, fasalli li rabbika wanhar, inna shani'aka huwa al-Abtar. Al-Kawthar is, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. We have granted you a Kawthar, the, the root of the word is abundant, abundance. Kawthar huh? Therefore Allahumma salli That Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Atadruna mal kawthar Do you know what al kawthar is? They said Allah and his messenger knows best He said فَإِنَّهُ نَهْرٌ وَعَدْنِيهِ رَبِّي عَزَّ وَجَلَّ عَلَيْهِ خَيْرٌ كَثِيرٌ Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said It is a river that Allah has promised to give me and it has so much uh, goodness in it. وَهُوَ حَوْضٌ It is a pond. تَرِدُ عَلَيْهِ أُمَّتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ My nation will come on judgment day to that حَوْض. آنِيَتُهُ عَدَدَ النُّجُومِ فِي السَّمَاءِ That the drinking pots that it has is like the uh, the uh, Allahumma salli alayhi wa sallam, like the stars in the heavens. فَيُخْتَلَجُ الْعَبْدُ مِنْهُمْ فَأَقُولْ So they'll come, and some of them that come, some of the uh, Ummah, the nation of Prophet, that come to drink from the Kawthar, that um, Allahumma salli alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, the angels will snatch some of them away. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ummati. رَبِّ إِنَّهُ مِنْ أُمَّتِي This person is from my nation. And he will say, إِنَّكَ لَا تَدْرِي مَا أَحْدَثَ بَعْدَكَ You don't know what he's done after you. So it is a pond that may Allah grant us all to drink from, from the hands of Prophet Wasallam, from the hands of Ahlul Bayt, Sayyidina Ali, Sayyidina Hassan Hussein. They are going to be the ones who are giving people to drink on al kawthar Prophet ﷺ said, I entered uh, heaven and I find a river that the, the banks of the river are made of pearls. Tents of pearls. And then I put my hand in it, into its flowing water and, and I find it like musk with the strongest smell, beautiful smell of musk. And I said, what is this, Jibreel? He said, this is the river Kawthar, which Allah has given you. Then, 
pray to your Lord and sacrifice for him. Inna shani'aka huwa al-abatar. The one who, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. The one who hates you will be cut off. Inna shani'aka huwa al-abatar. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. This ayah was revealed because Al-As ibn Wa'il that whenever the messenger would be mentioned in his presence he would say leave him for indeed he is a man who was cut off because Prophet ﷺ did not have male children. He is not going to have descendants. So when he dies he will not be remembered. That's what his enemy was saying about Prophet ﷺ. Therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this surah Shamir, that this surah was revealed concerning Ka'ab bin Ashraf and a group of disbelievers who used to say such Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the one who hates you will be cut off. And it is good to note here that the progeny of Sayyidina Muhammad now in the world a few years ago i heard something uh, that uh, I, uh, said that there's 27 million uh, people who are connected and related to prophet ﷺ through sayyidina al hassan sayyidina al hussein and if you think about the miracle that's why also i've heard some ta'wils and tafsir of this surah that also one of the meanings of al kawthar is is the, the family of Prophet ﷺ that uh, related to the family of Prophet ﷺ. And the fact that the family of Prophets will be the ones giving people to drink the, the river Kawthar. And the fact that those people who say that Prophet's mention will, will finish after, after him because he doesn't have male descendants. And all, all the, from Sayyidina al Hassan. And Sayyidina al Hussein. Sayyidina al Hassan, it is said, he had two uh, male children that survived and had families and progeny. And Sayyidina al Hussein has had one, Sayyidina Ali Zayn al Abidin. And from those three, 27 million now are connected to Prophet from his progeny. And his mention and their mention is exalted. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina. And it is said that the one, the, the one, there's, as we are reading in the tafsir, that there is no agreement on who is that one that is, uh, Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa that hates Prophet, that used to say. There's many different, uh, some, some hadith say it is this one, some hadith say it's that one, and no one knows who that one is. So the mention of the one who used to say to about to Prophet that your descendants are finished, even his his own even his mention is not. No one knows who he is. Allahumma hmm. salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar. And then Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Qul ya ayyuha al kafirun. La a'budu ma ta'budun. This surah is a declaration that we are innocent from all kinds of shirk or polytheism or all believers. You are declaring, I, ya ayyuha al kafirun. I, I don't believe in what you believe. And this was directed towards the disbelievers of Quraysh. Prophet ﷺ was ordered to say to them that his faith is not like their faith. Because Sabab al Nuzul, it is that it is said that in their ignorance, the disbelievers of Quraysh invited the Prophet to worship their idols for a year, would in turn worship his God for a year. 
Therefore, Allah revealed this surah. Ya ayu al kafirun, O you who I worship not that which you worship. And I acknowledge that you don't worship the same God I worship. Wala antum abiduna ma'abud. And then reiterating, Wala ana abidun ma'abudtum, nor do I worship what you worship, nor do you worship what I worship. You have your religion, I have mine. To you, your religion, to, to me. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in another verse, وَإِنْ كَذَّبُوكَ فَقُلْ لِي عَمَلِي وَلَكُمْ عَمَلِي If they deny your, what you're saying, say, I have my deeds, you have yours, you're innocent of what I do, and I'm innocent of what you, you do. Same kind of meaning. And this surah, Ta'adil, in reward, half of the Qur'an, uh, in terms of reward. It, is, it equates. So reciting Surah Al-Kafirun twice is like reciting the Holy Qur'an. In reward, not in Bismillah uh, Rahman Rahim. إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح Allah's victory comes ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الأفواج فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا this a surah um, to show you يعني, that, that, that what, what one reads in Holy Quran is not like another. So Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab used to allow Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas who was very young, the cousin of Prophet وسلم, and the one who is called Turjuman al-Quran, the translator of the Quran. He used to allow him in his gatherings with older Sahaba and senior Sahaba. And some, he heard that some, some of them were complaining. Why is he allowing this young man? We also have kids his age. Why we don't allow them as well? And Sayyidina Umar wanted to, to, to show them that this kid is not normal. This young man is not normal. So he asked them one time, in, while he's there, he asked them, what do you say about the surah إِذَا نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ what was it revealed about and they said that it is about the completion of the message of Allah the victory of uh, in Mecca and some say like that And then he asked Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas. Some of them said, that it, it is an encouragement that when, we, when Allah gives us victory to thank him and so forth. And they were giving their ta'wil. When, when he asked Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas said that it is, this was the announcement that Prophet Sallallahu is about to depart from this world. Uh, because the completion of religion, when Allah's victory comes and people are coming into the religion in, in waves, uh, glorify your Lord. So this was the announcement to Prophet that time is near for him to leave dunya. And so Sayyidina Umar said, Allah ibn Abbas said, is that radiallahu anhuma ajma'in. And it is said that after that was revealed, Prophet was always engaged in tasbih and istighfar. Sayyid Aisha said that he would, uh, uh, the Messenger was always saying, Subhanak Allah, bihamdik Allah, maghfirli. That he was asking, he heard the order and he obeyed. In the story, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ When Allah's victory comes, and opening, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you see people coming into the religion in waves, praise Allah and ask His forgiveness. 
Sura of Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Tabbat yada Abi Lahab bin Watab Surah was revealed regarding the uncle of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Aba Lahab and his wife perish the two hands of Abu Lahab may they perish his wealth and children will not benefit, benefit him he will enter the fire full of flames and his wife who carries wood in her will carry wood, who carries wood will have on her neck a twisted rope made of masad which is the lufa type of uh, rope leaf he he used to harm prophet him and his wife although he was his uncle but he did not consider that and he was chasing him around and harming him telling people who are listening to him that don't believe him huh? so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this and this is also another miracle you know if that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tabbat yada that Allah condemned Abu Lahab in his life his wife to hellfire he said that they will they will basically they're destined for hell and no one thought in Quraysh to, and Abu Lahab himself did not think that he could destroy the whole message message of Prophet Sallallahu if he comes and declares his Islam. So if Abu Lahab came and declared his Islam to Prophet say Shahada, and I be, I believe, then he. Uh, the fact that he is destined for hell, how could he be destined for hell now that he accepted Islam? Huh? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah uh, certified him from people in hell. He, was not, he would not have been able to become Muslim after that. And his wife would abuse Prophet وسلم, as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described her in very humiliating terms for the Arabs. She's carrying wood with a rope around her neck. Huh? And this is also when she heard this, she came to Prophet to abuse him, that how he could say this alone. And, and she found Sayyidina Abu Bakr and sitting next to Prophet, and she's looking at Sayyidina Abu Bakr and saying, where is your companion? Yani Allah complete her, completely veiled her. She was looking at Prophet and she couldn't see him. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Surah Al-Ikhlas Qul huwa Allahu ahad Allahu samad Lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufuan ahad Say Allah is one Allah is the sustainer of all things in need of nothing He has not begotten nor is He begotten and He has no one equal to Him in shape or form and there, there's many hadiths about this surah and the reason is uh, the, the unbelievers supposedly came to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and says rabbak, give us the lineage of your Lord and this, this surah was revealed also there was one companion who recited it in every prayer and people complained and he said Prophet ﷺ complained to Prophet ﷺ and he says, ask him why he, he recites Qulhu Allahu Ahad in every prayer. And they asked him and he said, because I, I love it. Because it's a description of the Rahman. It describes my Allah, Rahman, and I love to recite it. And then Prophet ﷺ tell him that Allah loves him.
and this was a companion from the Ansar. He used to lead people in Masjid Quba and he would recite always Qul Hu Allahu Ahad. He would always recite Qul Hu Allahu Ahad before he recites anything else. He would recite another surah after that, but he would always recite that first. And they came and told Prophet complaining. And that in another, in another, he said to Prophet that I love this verse, this surah, and Prophet said, your love for this surah will make you enter he heaven. And Prophet وسلم, it is equal to a third of the Quran. And Sayyidina Abu Dawood, he said, does any of you uh, is not able to read a third of the Quran every night? And he said that that Qulhu Allahu Ahad is a third of the Quran. Another hadith is that Sayyidina Abu Hurairah heard that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard someone reciting Qulhu Allahu Ahad so the messenger said wajabat means it became an, it became guaranteed for him and they said what did they asked him about what what he meant he said that heaven became guaranteed for reciting qul huwa allahu ahad and prophet was always reciting This surah, that Prophet Sallallahu one time uh, took the hand of Mu'ad bin Abdullah, a companion, and he said to him, "Qul." Then he became silent. Say. Then he, he then he said, "Qul again." Say again. Then he said became silent then he, he he said what should I say he said قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ say قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ وَالْمُعَوِّذَتَيْنِ and the other two قُلْز قُلْ عَوْدُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقُ قُلْ عَوْدُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ every night and every morning when you uh, morning and evening three times تَكْفِكَ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ مَرَّتَيْنِ he said say to the, say it will be sufficient for you twice daily. Hmm. So reading, reading the three quls every morning and every night. And there's also a hadith about supplicating with qul Allahu ahad. That a man praying and, and supplicating That he was supplicating by uh, by Allah, Allahu Ahad, Allah, Allah Samad, Lam Yalid, Lam Yulid, Lam Yakun, No Kufu, and Ahab. Prophet Sallallahu said that by the one who holds my hand, uh, my my soul in his hand, he asked Allah with Allah's greatest name. That man say, Allahumma ni asaluka bi ani ashadu anna ka anta Allah al ahad al samad al ladi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad. That was his dua, and he uh, and he, uh, Prophet Sallallahu said he used Allah's greatest name. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Surat Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq I seek refuge with the Lord of the uh, falaq is Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad the
is the time after before sunrise. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Min sharri ma khalaq, from the evil, I seek refuge with the Lord of al-Falaq, from the evil of what he created. Min sharri ma khalaq, wa min sharri ghasiqin idha waqab. Yani, min sharri ma khalaq, from the evil of what he's created, from the evil of ghasiq. Ghasiq is the night, and when waqab, Sharri Rasikin Ida Wakab refers to the setting of the sun. Bukhari mentioned this from him, Ibn Abi Nah also mentioned this. This means the sun when it sets. So Allah is swearing by the daybreak and the sunset. In Sharri Rasikin Ida Wakab. Seek re- Allah's Prophet Sallallahu said, Seek refuge with Allah from the evil of the time at the time when the, of the sunset when it becomes dark. وَمِن شَرِّ نَفَّثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ These are the witches that blow into uh, uh, ropes. They tie the rope knots and, and blow on them. أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق من شر غاصم الوقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد and from the evil of those who اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد they envy enviness and these are part of the morning and evening recitations and also to fend off sihr and to fend off uh, harm. Uh, Prophet ﷺ was reading them and was teaching his companions to read them for so many things. And one should integrate them in their daily word. Read, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقُ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ Daily, morning and evening if you can, as much as one can. He would read them and he would blow on his hand before going to sleep, in his hands, and he would, whatever he can reach, uh, wipe over his, his body, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, in teaching us. Especially in this time now, with all, so much darkness and negativity, um, need, need, we need this uh, protection. And it is real, hasad is real. So always the advice of our teachers was, even you have, don't, don't show, don't show. He even had problem with people eating in restaurants next to the window because he said, if a person that is hungry comes, comes walks by and sees you eating a nice meal, he may poison it by looking at it, hasad. So to that much, Yani, even if you're wealthy, don't go buy the best cars or biggest homes because you don't want the eyes of envious people to be on you. In Sharri Hasidin, Ida Hasid. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Abu Rabbi Nas. I seek refuge with the Lord of people, Malik al Nas, the one who owns them, Ilahi al Nas, the, the one they worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their Lord, min sharri al-waswas al from the evil of the uh, shaitan that khannas means he hides, he runs every time you seek refuge with Allah. Alladhi waswisu fi sudur nas the one who blows his uh, waswas, his, his 
uh, evil, evil, evil hissing and whispering fi sudur nas in the chest of people from min al nas from the jinn and from human beings. Prophet ﷺ said that every one amongst you has a has a devil. That there's not a single one of you except that he has a companion, a devil, that has been assigned to him. And Prophet Sallallahu the companion asked, What about you? Do you also have one? He says, Yes, I do, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me power over him. And my qareen, the devil that's with me, became a Muslim. He only uh, mentions good things to me. And he also said that shaitan moves in the blood of a human being, uh, moves in the human being like the blood moves in, in his veins. Allah. So there are two views that does he whisper in human beings and jinn also? Uh, this is because jinns are also included in the usage of the word. Sayyidina Ibn Jarid said has been used in reference to them that yes in both you, he can whisper to humans and to jinn. Allah said the other opinion said no because Allah says that he whispers in the chest of men and then min al jinnati wan nas from devils and mankind And Allah, he, he uses the verse that jinn also, jinn, that jinn also will uh, try to whisper to each other, uh, delusion. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. May Allah forgive us, Allahumma afu anna wa ghfir lana. وارحمنا اللهم علمنا من القرآن ما جاهلنا اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا We ask forgiveness if we made any mistakes in conveying this uh, the meanings of these verses and we ask your forgiveness for our shortcomings and thank you very much uh, for joining us السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته